Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Monday. It is March 21st. This will be our uh, chart lesson for the day, and it's mostly downhill today. We rallied right at, into the open and had a big leg down. We bounced a little bit, made a lower high, and uh, you'd, we'd look for a measured leg down, which was to here, but by this time, we already had this other leg, so I would use it as well. And you can see we were close to it. Both of them, we overshot them a little bit. So the market was a little bit weak here. But we've rallied into the close. Um, we probably got an hour left here. It's about 3 o'clock. And so uh, we could continue higher. We could turn lower again. But we're really struggling to go higher. Uh, I want to show you the daily chart. Let's go over to look at it real quick. You can see here on the daily that we, you know, we rallied four straight days, a really strong rally, pretty good rally, and we did finally get through this resistance. And uh, and you can see today it was really when I started this video it was looking like we were going to close down. Now it's looking like we may close higher if we continue to go higher. We may even close higher than we did uh, Friday. So we'll just have to see how this ends up. Um, it's really looking like a topping action here, but maybe we got more room to the upside. Generally, you'll come back and test this breakout area, and you can see we're getting into overbought territory up here, which has been a long time since we've done that. Uh, way back here in uh, January, it looks like, the last time we did that. So uh, this is a nice positive sign for a change. So we'll see what happens here. Um, this thing is still continuing to climb. It looks like on the daily, so maybe we'll close upward. We'll we'll see. This could we might end up closing higher today again. So we'll see. It's real close. But let's go back to the 2,000 tick chart and uh, go through. The, well, actually, real quick. I mean, what we would expect to happen is pi prices at some point to come back and test this breakout, and maybe even come back to the midline. We might even get back in this range again. You just never know. But you'll expect prices to come back and test this breakout. And if it holds, then we'll probably go higher. And if it doesn't, um, and we get back in there, we could continue lower. Or we might just continue back in the range. So we'll have to see what happens. But uh, this feels like a little reversal, uh, maybe topping action here. At least it did earlier. Now I'm not so sure because we're still climbing out of there. So we'll just have to see what tomorrow, you know, how today ends up closing. We still got an hour to go. Anything could happen. And uh, then we'll see what comes for tomorrow. So, but let's go back over to the intraday chart, the 2000 tick chart. Okay, here's our 2000 tick chart. And you can see again, we had a couple of measured legs down. Actually, we had more than two measured legs down. We had one big leg and then we had another leg that were was almost two equal legs down here. Um, and it looked like we were, I mean, I would really call this a, I mean, this may end up, you, you want to call this a range day. But at the same time, there's no clear lows, there's no clear highs. So you could look at it either way. I didn't really characterize it as a range day. It looks like a two legs of correction, and now we're trending higher again. And that may be what we, that may be all we get out of today. We may, uh, we may go higher from here. We'll just have to see. This day may close higher before it's over. So I think we'd have to close. We'd have to close somewhere up here near the highs of the day, of the day to. Because here's the close from Friday up here. So, or actually, yeah, this is a close from Friday up here. Right in here. So, yeah, we don't have that much more to go. I was thinking we closed up here, but you can see we closed right, right across here. So, we don't have much more to go. We might, we might surpass that before it's over. But anyway, let's zoom in. We'll go through the trades and we'll wrap the day up. Okay, our seven o'clock came right in here as we're turning down. Um, it's a shame we didn't break higher right here, but we made a two bar matching high, or it might have been a good place to enter. You did make a lower high here, but um, even though you had a break and a new high at this point of this blue channel, uh, I don't think you can go short right there into the EMA that far down. So just kind of sit tight and see uh, what happens. And then notice we do get a close outside, a new low, and then a reversal. 
I don't think you want to enter long here since we've already had a break in new high. But when it gives you this higher low, maybe you enter there. But when it gives you a failure right here, I really like entering there. Um, it didn't take off like I. It took a little bit longer to take off, um, but it's. Uh, I still think you, it'd be hard to uh, ignore that reversal if you're a little more experienced trader. I mean, that's a that's the kind of trade we look. And it was a quick, easy scalp, although you didn't get anything else out of it. Unfortunately, this thing takes off without you. So. Uh, we do run up, make a new high, and the next thing you know, it's rocketing lower. It's tempting to enter there, and you might could argue to go short right there um, on the lower high. Uh, this is a double top, so I wouldn't count that as first entry and this second entry, uh, even though you wouldn't take that second entry anyway because it doesn't really qualify. But I, I'm going to look at that as a double top, so first entry. And then second entry. So there's where your failure occurred. But you might trade that as a lower high. It's a little far. You know, usually you want your lower high to be a little closer to the highs than that. But you can clearly see there's one leg down. And you'll probably get another one. But generally, I'm going to wait for a failure by that point. And when you get the failure there, it takes on off here. Um, and this could just, this looks like an overshoot because we quickly got a break here. So to me, that looks like an overshoot. Then we try to go higher once. Um, you didn't really break higher here. Uh, again, it makes a two bar matching high, but it is a second entry short. It's a nice bearish bar. Uh, I marked it green because it's a little close to these lows, but um, I still like going short there. Um, but because it's really close you, you need to have room to scalp out here so as long as you got room you're probably okay but it's a little sideways and there is a little support across there so it's just something to think about you drop on down you get a first entry and then you get a second entry here and basically that's a triple test right there too so you got a second entry short on a triple test and you can see that across there Nice bearish bar. I mean, this opens on its very high and closes on its very low. That's as bearish as it gets. But then you also get another first entry, second entry long, and a first entry, second entry short. So it's almost another repeat pattern of this thing right here. Um, and you couldn't take it on the second entry short, but with the failure, it doesn't matter what the signal bar looks like. So you might consider that one and go short right there. Okay, had a little interruption. I think we talked about this trade. It was a failed second. Notice the new high, first entry, second entry, and then new low, first entry, second entry. So it's a failed second entry long, second entry short. You couldn't take it on the second entry short because the signal bar doesn't qualify. But if you traded it as a failure, uh, maybe you take that trade. We then bottom out here, um, make a little double bottom, and then a higher low right here. Uh, notice you got a new low, you get a first entry and then a second entry. That's a nice, what a reversal looks like. Uh, I like going long there on that reversal. Um, we run zone up, you come back, you get a second entry right here, but I wouldn't take that. It's still within that down channel and you are outside the trend line. A lot of times people ask me this, uh, when should you not take a second entry or once if it was right here at the key entry point maybe you take the second entry uh but when it's outside and you've already had a break you better let that play out just to be sure and you can see we had a higher low here i still wouldn't take that too congested right there but then we get another reversal or a failed second entry short so um it actually failed on this bar so i like going long right there and you can see the momentum on that bar it comes up uh, then we just kind of go into this range. Um, we make a double top and then a lower high right here with a big bearish signal bar. I like going short there. Uh, we bounce down here a few times, but I don't see anything I like up here. That one's tempting. Uh, it's such a bearish bar, but it is on a failed breakout. So the fact that we close much higher on a breakout here, I would wait on a lower high. We do get a lower high here, but with that two bar matching low, I just wasn't with this, with the buy still being somewhat up. I think it's too risky. It worked, but I, I just wouldn't take it. 
and then we bounce again here again this is just too much into the middle um maybe you take that trade on a higher low it is it's an engulfing bar though uh there's still room to get out but look where we turned down the last couple of times not much room to there um the odds we've been going from high to low high to low except for this one time so um that means a lot of selling came in there not as much buying whatever for some reason we couldn't get back up to the highs that time so i'm a little leery of it here of course we break out and boom and you don't get a lower high here you get a lower high but it's way down here this is tempting to go short on this breakout pullback short but it I would I wouldn't do it on the engulfing bar. I'd wait for this to close, and you see it closes very neutral. But we finally get a first entry, second entry right here. This is a second entry short off the key entry point. Uh, the reason I made this one green is because the bar is so big and it's so far down here. You're going short at the very low. Um, it's still worth considering, but it's a little more aggressive. Um, we're nowhere near a measured move um, on this thing based off this. You can see, um, and the the last lows are way down here. So you got a little room. So maybe you take that one. Again, it's a little aggressive. And you can see we bounce at that same spot. Um, we work back up. And you get this lower high. Technically, this is a second entry short. You're moving up. You get a first entry and then a second entry. But notice the close outside, new high, and then it turns down very bearish. Again, I didn't make this one red because it's a little bit congested and sideways there. Uh, there's still reasons to like that trade, but I think it's a little aggressive the way it sets up. There's a lower high here, but you can't go short right into those lows. Uh, you keep working lower here again there's just no setups till finally you bounce you get a failed second entry short here but it's not a reversal pattern because it's on the wrong side of the ema so you can't take that one uh, it tech it definitely looks more like a reversal here but it's the counts aren't right so and then finally you get a close outside and a second entry long and I probably would have made this one blue, except you get this inside bar that doesn't break higher and there's no body. So now you got congestion right there at the EMA, into the EMA. Odds are we're going to try to make a new high, but I just don't think that's good enough. I think you're better off to wait. And then notice you get a first entry and a second entry, and it breaks lower and fails and turns up and goes out the other side. I like going longer. You could take it on the engulfing bar. Generally, you're better off to wait and see what this does and then go long. And then, of course, you do the same thing in the opposite direction. You get a first entry, second entry. And this is just basically a lower high after a failed breakout and a big bearish bar. And it is a failed second entry long. Of course, you're not looking for second entries and failures in here. But if you get one that goes along with it and you get a good setup, otherwise pay attention to it. The reason you're not really looking for second entries and failures is because you'll get chopped to pieces if you trade those alone. you got to trade the range rules, basically. And But if you get those other setups with it a good range rule then maybe you take it and then there's a lower another lower high here but again you're it looks a little sideways by that point i wouldn't fool with it and we do get this nice bounce but no setup there and then we're just chopping along sideways again i don't see any setups in here that i would risk and you get a failed breakout that's one you might take but on a failure that goes higher like that generally you want a lower high and that doesn't come till here and we moved a little far by that time. It's a good signal bar. It is a lower high, but it doesn't set up exactly ideally like you would want it to. So I just gave it a green one. And of course, it's one of the better moves of the day, but it just didn't set up very well. Um, we get the break here, and we but instead we start trending higher. We don't even make a new low on this one. Um, there's a higher low here, not a very good signal bar right at the EMA. Uh, you might have looked at this one as a failure, but the failure technically happened here. So this would just be a second entry and it's an inside bar. So it's not a good setup either. Um, we make a new high. And this is why when you make a new high, you generally want to wait for a lower high because then it made one more and then it makes the lower high and goes lower. But that's well after 2.30. Two so... Uh, I think I finally got my lines figured out here. For some reason, um, 
it, you know, I changed my default so it would close at 2.30 again, but it just won't change on that indicator. So if you open a new chart, you got to remember to check that sell-off time. I, I can't figure out why I won't set it as default, but for some reason it won't. Um, I saw I just didn't have time to play with it. So if you notice my chart's off, it's not on 2.30, just point it out to me. Because I, I usually don't trade live in the afternoons. Most of the time when I'm looking at it in the afternoon, I'm just looking at what happened after the fact. Usually I'm watching the charts till lunchtime or so. And then after that, I don't watch them very much. So I'm usually doing something else at that point. I may have it open and glance over there occasionally, but I'm generally not watching watching it like I'm trading it, or, or if that makes sense. So, But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.